So if you've been paying attention to anything fighting game related, you know that Street Fighter V is out and about, and that Tekken 7 is on its way early 2017. Now I predominantly play Tekken as my main competitive game when I go to tournaments, but I tend to play other fighters in between releases when I get tired of the most current Tekken. After I got done Tekken Tag Tournament 2, I looked at more Combat X, since I played MK9 between Tekken 6 and Tekken Tag Tournament 2. I fell out of love with MKX really quickly and pretty much stopped playing fighting games altogether. Then Street Fighter V creeped this ugly head out and I found myself very interested in the game. Now I've never been able to get into Street Fighter competitively even when Street Fighter 4 was the main game to play but I have tried on multiple occasions even with Third Strike. One day I decided to play the Street Fighter V bit because hey why not. From there I actually became a Street Fighter player digging my heels into the fundamentals of the game and really understanding the game from a player's perspective instead of my usual spectator seat. Coming from Tekken to Street Fighter wasn't as big of a challenge as I assumed it was. In fact, I incorporated my general fighting game knowledge pretty well. That being said, I am nowhere as good in the game as I am in Tekken or Soul Calibur, but it's slowly coming together pretty smoothly. The more I play Street Fighter V, however, my mind wonders about my main game and trying to get more people to play. With the inclusion of Nkuma, simplified systems in certain areas, overall better presentation, I feel like the hype for Tekken 7 is well deserved. My only concern is how the Street Fighter community will take the game when, it, when they try it out. I want a bigger Tekken community. I will be happy if Street Fighter players pick the game up, and even if they don't stick with it, they gain a better appreciation for it. I want to take the time out to visually show the differences and similarities between the games to help out both communities to understand the games better. Now disclaimer, I am not the best Tekken or Street Fighter player, so there is a huge chance a lot of this can be wrong, but I am confident enough in my fighting game knowledge to do this video. If you have any issues with the series please comment below or hit me up in any of the areas listed in the description below all right i also want to note that i'm talking about the most recent entries of these series that's available to everyone but i will deviate when necessary now let's get started now the number one thing people go to when talking about playing tekken is its complexity let's get one thing straight yes tekken is more of a complicated game i mean just look at the difference in move lists Okay, yeah, that was pretty shallow, but I want to get the fact that Tekken is more complex out of the way first. As a matter of fact, most 3D fighters are more complicated almost by design due to that they're similarly like Origins talking about Virtual Fighter. Does this make the game hard to learn and conceptualize? Yes, it does. Especially if you have hard times compartmentalizing large amounts of information. This is the issue a lot of people have with Tekken and other 3D fighters in my opinion, and it's an issue Tekken players have to address when, when it comes to teaching the game. The game comes easy to people who can take tons of information and can conceptualize said info and apply it easily. I've made this mistake plenty of times of trying to explain the game and it's only through playing other fighters that I can really start to teach the hows and the whys of Tekken to those who want to learn. I feel that everyone can learn Tekken but it takes a certain mindset to begin that process and using Street Fighter as a catalyst I can hopefully form that mindset. So to start let's talk about the huge move lists and character uniqueness. Now while of course Tekken generally has larger move lists at this point in the series, the funny thing is there is a lot of information move while seeking with Street Fighter as well. While on Street Fighter V I recall having to look at all of Ken's normal and special moves and realizing that just like Tekken, even with smaller move lists, there are different variations in frame data to take into consideration. In Season 1 of Street Fighter V, Ken's light punch sure you can has less range, only hits once, and has invincible frames on lows and throws on startup. Ken's medium punch throw you can is straight up invincible on startup, and Ken's heavy punch throw you can has throw and invincible frames. Basically what I'm getting at is that move variance and the amount of moveless knowledge is quite great, but do you need to know all this starting out? No. What about Tekken's move list? Can you really apply the same logic? Yes you can. A common fallacy is that you have to know every character's moves in Tekken, and given a larger move list and typically large character roster, that task is quite daunting. You really don't. Especially starting out, and the key part of learning fighting games is experimentation to see what works in situations and what doesn't. One thing to consider about Tekken's complexity is that the characters are homogenized to a large degree. Now, Street Fighter characters do share concepts like anti-air, sweep, six normals for all positions, standing, crouching, and jumping. They usually aren't copy and pasted like moves are in Tekken between characters. Yes, I know this is common in more older Street Fighter games. In Tekken, there are a lot of generic moves and concepts shared between the cast. You got jabs, crouch jabs, hop kicks, running slide, running slash kicks, running tackle, and that's just the generic moves that share animations and frame data. 
Almost every character in Tekken is built on a template and then expanded on in their own unique way. Street Fighter characters seem to be built more so on certain game plans and follow those to a T. Tekken characters are built on a generic template and given their unique qualities after. What does this mean? While I don't want to touch on the meta and gameplay styles just yet, what this does allow is an ability to jump from character to character without much trouble. This also means you need to spend more time learning the system than that particular character. Not saying this isn't possible in Street Fighter, but learning your character's ins and outs to learn matchups is more important in that game. And this is where many transitioning players get caught up in. Now it may seem like I'm making a case for Tekken being easier to learn than people think, and yeah I am in a way. The reason I'm pointing these two things out is because Tekken's complexity is in its number of options within the system, the number of things you have to learn and consider while in a match. Tekken simply has a huge number of offensive and defensive options when compared to Street Fighter. When I refer to offensive options, I mean in the number of attacks and types of attacks, which is sort of obvious. The high-low overhead game in Street Fighter is expanded on in Tekken with the high-mid-low game. And before you go overheads and mids are the same, they aren't, and I'll explain that later in the meta section. There are usually more defensive options in Tekken on a character-to-character -character basis. Blocking in Tekken and Street Fighter is the same, and Tekken is unusual in this aspect because it's one of the few 3D fighters that uses back to block. Of course, there is also usually characters heightened mobility as a defensive and positioning tool. Parries are in both series, although in a much more limited capacity in Street Fighter and only universal in one game. Every character in Tekken has a low parry and only certain characters have standing parries that give frame advantage, a free attack, or maybe positioning. Tekken also has reversals which acts as defensive throws for a decent amount of damage to kill pressure. The closest thing in Street Fighter V would be V reversals, a rework of the Alpha Counter in the Alpha games. The difference here being that there's no meter tied to reversals and that you can reverse set reversal if you predict them properly. Okizeme or the wake up game in both games are vastly different given that in Tekken there are multiple ways to get up in different positions to be in while on the ground that gives you access to wake up moves. You can also be attacked while on the ground as well which opens up an entirely different game. Street Fighter just has a quick wake up option and back row us out of the normal wake up. This is a common difference between 2D and 3D fighters. 3D fighters you can pretty much effectively keep your opponent on the ground which has led many scrubbers like, let me get up. Combos are an odd subject because it's hard for me to say which one is more difficult than the other. I think that's mainly a player preference. A major problem I've always had until now is how to do combos in 2D fighters. Canceling and hit confirming combos in Street Fighter was a mountain for me because I didn't understand the concept enough to really apply it to my execution. The most common combos in Tekken are juggled, so it's very easy to visually confirm and perceive the combo for the most part. There are hit confirm strings in Tekken, but the actual big damage combos are easily confirmable for me personally. I've heard this issue from other Tekken players as the reason why Tekken players don't play Street Fighter. I want to say that this is one area where I feel like Tekken is the least complicated, unless mechanics like Bound and New Tail Spin and Tekken 7 are too hard to conceptualize. I could go further, but I don't want to go so far as to reach to the next section too much. So next we'll compare the meta of both games. Now let's compare the meta game of both series. To start, let's take this quote from Mr. Domination 101 himself, Seth Killian. What makes Street Fighter so good is not the animation, it's not the sound, it's not the artwork or the character personalities, or even the combos. So what is it then? It's the fireball. That's what fundamentally sets it apart. This is something that's almost entirely missing from true 3D games. Once you get sufficiently far away, there's not a lot to do, because there just isn't anything you can really do to one another. Apart from running back together, the game sort of collapses. Now another disclaimer, this is young Seth Killian, so I wouldn't rush to his Twitter or whatever to confront him on this because more than likely he himself has come to the conclusion that most of this is BS. For one, it doesn't take into consideration that other 2D fighters like KOF or Mortal Kombat also have fireballs but aren't nearly as popular competitive. It's also a huge misunderstanding of the metagame of 3D fighters. To sum up most 3D fighters metagames, it's more akin to traditional competitive fighting. This is especially the case post Second Tag Tournament 1, where the walls were finally introduced into the series in Tekken 4. The fights in 3D games tend to be up close and personal with a rare projectile in sight that's easily avoided. 2D fighters tend to lean towards the zoning game and is typically matchup heavy depending on the character. 
As I touched on briefly in the previous section, character matchups tend to matter a lot more here and based on that matchup determines how you play. This is not to say zoning play doesn't exist in 3D fighters, it's just not the same as 2D fighters due to the lack of a true strong long range option, even with Akuma and Eliza in Tekken 7. 3D fighters are played mainly up close and personal and spacing is a huge proponent of the metagame. Learning how to play within the system itself and less on matchups is a huge deal in these games. I think an important concept to learn going into any fighter game is learning the purpose of the game. And by purpose I mean what tools are you given in this game? Why do I have these tools and how do I use them? So since we're talking about the meta, let's finally touch on the high overhead low game in SF versus the high mid low game in Tekken. Uh, to even begin talking about this, we have to look at how the game differs on blocking. For one, in Street Fighter you're generally blocking crouching, mainly because you can block most attacks besides jump ins and overheads by crouching. In Tekken you're generally blocking standing up because you're blocking mostly highs and mids. Now I often hear the comparison of mids and overheads being alike, and while they both have the property of hitting while you're crouching, overheads are used as a tool to open up defenses to make the opponent stand block and allow them to be vulnerable to lows. Mids and Tekken aren't used to open characters up. They are your normal moves for pressure and launchers, same with most highs. Lows and Tekken are moves that help open up your opponent so you can make your opponent duck so you can hit them with mids and highs. That's the difference between 2D fighters and 3D fighters when it comes to attack orientation. Speaking of opening up defenses, throws are different of course in Tekken and Street Fighter. While they both serve the purpose of breaking blocks, resetting momentum and changing positioning, the key difference in throwing comes down to predictions and reactions. In Street Fighter, you cannot break regular throws on reaction, nor can you break command throws like the SPD regardless if you predict it. Street Fighter requires you to predict if your opponent is going to throw or not. You have to understand situations before you decide to take a throw. In Tekken, all throws can be broken except certain attack throws like big soccer kick and back throws. There are enough frames in Tekken to allow you to see throws happen and for you to react accordingly. It's a test of reactions rather than prediction, although certain characters like King break this rule. The way Tekken's throw system works is that you press buttons according to which arm comes out in animation. More throw oriented characters like King do have throws that force you to guess to make their throw game stronger, but it's still mostly exercise and reaction. I often see sidestepping and jumping as a comparison between the two as well. I can kinda see how you would compare the two, but they're very clearly different. The only clear similarities are the positioning and evasion aspects of both moves, even then they're a bit different. When it comes to positioning, jumping is a tool that allows you to escape and get in the personal space of your opponent. When you're in the corner, jumping is typically the easiest way of escaping. Trying to avoid fireballs from far away or evade a command throw or punish said moves, jump. Jumping usually has this in and out flow to it mainly, plus its verticality. Sidestepping is a bit limited compared to jumping, even though it's a huge part of the movement side of Tekken. Mainly because it's just limited to which side you're moving to. There's no additional ways to go, really. You also don't use sidestep as an offensive tool as much as jumping because it's mainly used for positioning and evasion. Sidestepping fits around Tekken's boxing metagame since you want to position your opponent towards different environments. Tekken has a lot more active positioning because of this. It's like a boxer trying to push his opponent to the rope or his opponent trying to escape. While this is applicable when referring to corners in Street Fighter to an extent, it just fits Tekken a bit more because you never really escape a situation even after a successful sidestep or sidewalk. I honestly believe that Tekken is a harder game to get into than Street Fighter. In Tekken, it is so easy to get punished for the smallest thing. Things that may be hard to pick on in the midst of a match. You have to consider a lot of the small microtransactions and frame data stage positioning, amount of life, etc. This got its absolute wildest in Tekken Tag Tournament 2, where the game stacked the tag system on top of Tekken's already bloated system mechanics, which have thankfully been toned down in Tekken 7. There's just a lot to think about at one time, and to be able to compartmentalize all that is usually the goal in intermediate level play. While I believe that intermediate play is that way for all fighting games, I feel like in Tekken it's just a longer road. Learning your options is a key component in a lot of fighting games, and even most games and sports in general. The thing with Tekken is that it takes a lot more effort to really get into the meat of the game because you have to learn all these variables to succeed at a certain point. Does this make the game any less fun though? Mm. The thing with fighting games as a whole is that there are so many of them and they mostly all do the same thing differently. So while Tekken may be a more complicated 3D game, 
There are more complicated 2D fighters compared to Street Fighter. And there are definitely less complicated 3D fighters. Street Fighter in comparison to most fighters out there is very... vanilla. Meaning that it is a basic fighting game experience, but that isn't a bad thing. It's really about what you like at the end of the day. Just because a game is more deeper or complicated doesn't exactly make it fun, but the same could be said for more straightforward fighters. The purpose of this video was to explain Tekken by comparing it to the most popular traditional fighter out there at the moment. It helps to point out the clear differences to make Tekken a lot more un understandable and approachable. I know talking about Tekken's complexity and deepness steer people away, but learning the game at its base is not really complex. Tekken can be and is more complex than Street Fighter, but generally learning the game in and out isn't once you're about to compartmentalize the many variables the game has. I learned that the best way to learn Tekken is to not go in head first, but to slowly put your toes in the pool. Start at the 3 feet before you go in the deep end. Take the game as slow as possible for you and find your groove. And if you can't, hey, this is not for you. But I urge you if you really want to try this series to not fret but rise to the challenge by making said challenge as trivial for as long as possible. And I'll help. This video is just the beginning of the content I have planned for Tekken 7 when the game comes out. And I hope this video made some things clear about Tekken. And I'm definitely looking forward to Tekken 7 for the entire year. Peace guys. Excellent!